Okay, amen. Well, just want to go ahead and uh, have you, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and uh, we'll turn to Revelation 19, verse 7. And uh, I'm going to give a message today that the title of the message is Resolved to Get Ready. Resolved to Get Ready. And, you know, we all have the times that we make New Year's resolutions and we make resolutions we want to lose weight or we want to exercise more, we want to read more or whatever it is, save more money or whatever, and, you know, by February we've already failed a million times. So, but the, uh, the, 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 the thought behind this message is Jonathan Edwards. I don't know if you know about Jonathan Edwards, but he was, a, he was the preacher in New England, the Puritan preacher in New England who led the first great awakening. But Jonathan Edwards, um, in his teenage years, this is, this is crazy, his, teen, his teenage years, he began to write down his resolutions of how he wanted to live. And if you ever feel like you're doing really good in your Christian walk, go Google Jonathan Edwards' 70 resolutions, and you'll be like, God, I don't even know you. But, I mean, it's like just crazy. But he made these resolutions, resolved to, you know, glorify God, resolved to, you know, live for his glory, resolved to take up the cross, whatever it was. But anyway, I was thinking that, as we enter into 2021, is the theme of this is resolve to get ready. If I could pick one theme that would characterize, I believe, what the Lord is emphasizing to us at Restoration Life, it's the need to get ready. So uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Revelation 19.7, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll open with that. And we sing about it, that, that song, uh, Get Ready, is very pertinent to us right now, but... Revelation 19, 7, let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. I want to draw your attention to something just real quick. Notice what it does not say in Revelation 19, 7. It does not say the Lord made the bride ready. If, you, if, your, if your translation says that, raise your hand. I was going to crack a joke, but it is not the Lord. Now, obviously, it is the Lord, but there is a there is a place of the bride who makes herself ready. It is it is the bride's responsibility to make herself ready. Now, obviously, God supplies the grace. God gives the power, but it is the bride who makes herself ready. And so I know that 2020, a lot of us were like so glad and happy. Okay, we, we're, we're finished with 2020, okay? But, uh, you know, we've just been probably the craziest year of our lives. You know, coronavirus and the lockdowns and the rioting and the, all that went on with the election and just the craziness of the times. There's such an instability or an uncertainty that we live in. It's like, okay, what is happening? We're, we're so thankful to go back to 2021 and we, or 2020, and we think, 2021, yes, we're so happy to enter. But I, I just want to draw our attention to this. And I, Dad brought it up in our, our service last Sunday, is we're moving into a time where it is the Lord himself who is our, our joy. It's the Lord himself who is our joy. And it's the Lord himself who is the source of joy. And, and that's what we're moving into. We're moving into a time where things are being shaken, where things are, um, you know, we're uncertain. But the Lord himself is the stability of our times. And may we go into 2021 with that ever-deepening foundation built upon the rock, Jesus Christ. Built upon the one who is the stability of our times. Built upon him, that he is our wisdom, he is our truth, he is our light, he is our life. And so as we, as we begin to move into 2021, I'm not promising you your best life now for 2021. I'm not promising you that all your dreams are going to come true. I'm not promising you that this is your year of breakthrough. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. 2021 may not be great externally, but I believe with all my heart it's going to be great internally. Amen? It is going to be great internally. I believe the Lord is about to do an incredible work in his church. 2020 was a year of shaking for the church. 2020 was a year of judgment to the church. I'm not saying that shaking and that judgment is over, but I'm saying that 2021, I believe, is a great year internally in our relationship with the Lord. And so... 
you know, this could very well be our best year yet in him. I believe it could be. The, uh, The invitation, I believe, is there. If we will go after that. So this message is not a prophecy of what is going to happen in 2021, but it's more of what I believe the Holy Spirit wants to emphasize in the church in 2021, and especially in this church. But I believe it's way bigger than than just this church, but it's globally what God wants to emphasize, the Spirit wants to emphasize in 2021. And so I'm going to talk about three things that I sense the Spirit of God wants to do or wants to say to the church in 2021 as we enter 2021. The first thing is, let's turn to Revelation chapter 12, is we are approaching the time, now now I'm saying, I want to use the words carefully, we're approaching the time of the birth of the man-child. I don't believe we're there yet. I believe, and we're going to talk a lot about that in, in, in 2021. It's a very important prophecy that so much of the church doesn't have any understanding about, but it's very important, very relevant to the times we live in today. But Revelation chapter 12, and you know, if you've been here for a while, you're familiar with this, but it is a very, to me, and in in my opinion, having studied end time prophecy for many, many years, in my opinion, Revelation chapter 12 is the greatest unfulfilled prophecy in Scripture. And in my opinion, that's that's still yet to be fulfilled. That. It is a a powerful, powerful scripture. And I believe we're living in the days when the Spirit of God wants to move in the church to bring forth a maturity into the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. And so in Revelation chapter 12, what you see is John is taken in the Spirit, and he says that in in Revelation chapter 1, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. That does not mean John was in the Spirit on a Sunday or the Sabbath. It means John was taken by the Spirit of the the living God into the day of the Lord, the last three and a half years of this age. And so when we read the book of Revelation, we've got to come with that seeing through that lens that John is seeing through that he's seeing through the lens of the day of the Lord. He's taken into different encounters. The the day of the Lord is the last three and a half years of this age. It's also known as the Great Tribulation. And so here in Revelation chapter 12, John is taken and he sees in the Spirit a heavenly woman, and she's clothed with the sun, and she has the moon under her feet, and she's crowned with a crown of 12 stars, That word crown is the word stephanos in the Greek. It means the overcomer's crown. Uh, And we're going to get into it. I don't have any time to get into the depth of interpreting this, but we are going to spend a lot of time in this in 2021 to really lay the foundation of this. But she's pregnant. I'm not going to even explain. I'm just going to say what I believe this woman is. It's the heavenly, she's in heaven. It's the heavenly overcomers throughout history giving birth to the mature sons of God, the overcomers, three and a half years before Christ comes back. I don't believe, it, the, and I'm gonna, I, this needs a lot of explanation, but we'll get into this later. I do not believe the man-child that's birthed is Jesus. Many believe that. I do not believe that's what it's talking about. I believe it's talking about the mature corporate man God wants to give birth to at the end of the age. And, and again, we'll, we'll dive, and I, I, I realize I just laid out a ton of information, but She's pregnant, and her belly is filled. And she's filled not just with a child, but a man-child, a mature son. And she gives birth to the son, and standing directly in front of her, wanting to devour her child is a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And he wants to devour her. He wants to, it's the accuser of the brethren. He wants to stop the mature church from coming forth. But God is going to protect the church. Amen? God is going to give birth to a man-child. God is going to give birth to the overcomers, the remnant in his church, who are overcoming what Jesus listed in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3. And look at verse 5 here. It says, talking about the woman, and she gave birth to a son. In fact, if you even look in your, in your, uh, in your Bible, my Bible says at the title, the, the, the male child Christ. Now, obviously, you know that's not in the scriptures. 
But I, I believe it is not Jesus Christ he's talk, uh, John's talking about, but the overcomers uh, at the end of the age. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. That's the very promise that Jesus gave to the overcomers at the church of Laodicea, or uh, church of Thyatira. If you overcome Jezebel, I will give you a rod of iron by which you will rule the nations. It says her child was caught up to God and to her throne. Now again, I'm not saying this prophecy is going to be fulfilled in 2021. By no means am I saying that. I'm saying the work, the internal work of preparation, as God is working in the remnant of his people, is going to be taken to a new level in 2021. I believe that is what is on the heart of God. On the heart of God is he wants to accelerate that internal work of readiness within his people. That it would be Jesus Christ in a people, not just in seed form, but in maturity. It would be a corporate remnant of God's people, the overcomers that Jesus was calling for in Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, that would overcome what he listed. And these group of people are the first fruits of the bride who makes herself ready. That is what God is wanting. I believe the Spirit of God is wanting. And so I just wanted to say a couple things is, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in this nation. We don't know what's going to happen in the nation. Some nations have been determined beforehand by God, like Israel, like the nations in Europe, I believe. America's destiny hangs in the balance. We are in that valley of decision. We don't know what's going to happen to America. We have, we, I believe God is with America, but we, we're in a valley of decision in our nation. One thing I know for certain is God's eternal purpose is absolutely going to happen. If you want to know what God wants to emphasize most above anything else as we head to, towards the end of the age, it is God's eternal purpose. And so, again, I'm going to say this is if you haven't read this book yet, my book, The Eternal Blueprint, and if you're watching online, I want to really recommend you get a copy of this. If you're on, looking online on YouTube, you can get this at Amazon, but it's The Eternal Blueprint. really want to say it's, it's a book we need to get deep into our heart as we head into 2021. Is God's eternal purpose is at the forefront of his heart. It's at the forefront of his heart. And so I believe the Holy Spirit is moving within the remnant of, of the body of Christ throughout the world to raise up overcomers, to raise up those people. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but to raise up those like Romans 8.14 says, all who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. God wants to take us from being a child of God to being a mature son of God, conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. God wants to remove us from our infant ways into the maturity of the Son of God. He wants to bring us into conformity with his Son. That is the great eternal purpose of God, is that he might conform his people into the very image of his Son. That is an awesome promise. That may not be your best life now, but I'm telling you, it's your best life for all eternity. It's to have the image of the Son of God. You, when he looks at you, Un along with the, the remnant of his people who overcome, he looks at you, he says, this is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Talking about the church who has been formed into the image of Jesus Christ. That gets me excited. You guys don't seem like you're too excited. Eating too much turkey and all that stuff. But, you know, Jesus... If you, if, and I, I've got this in the notes if you have it, but uh, page one, point E is specifically these, these overcomers that God wants to give birth to, they're characterized by a first love for Jesus. They have faithfulness to the Lamb. They have a love for the truth that, that overcomes compromise. They have an intolerance for Jezebel. They have a deep and a driving hunger for God that overcomes apathy. They have a disciplined lifestyle that empowers them to overcome and maintain their victory until the end. They have a fiery passion for Jesus. May God give us a fiery passion for the Son of God as we enter 2021. May our hearts be set ablaze for him as we enter into this new year. May we have a passion for the man Jesus Christ like we have never had before. And if we have that, 
all, everything else can be breaking loose. But if we have that, that is worth it all. It's to burn with passion for the man, Jesus Christ. A crucified self-life. God wants to take our self-love, our self-love, the love we have for ourselves, and bring us to the cross so that we would die and his life would rise up within us. They overcame him, Revelation 12, 10, they over, or 12, 11. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. Unto death. That's not just physical death. That word life in the Greek, suke, is soul. And sometimes it's easier to die for Jesus than it is to live for him. May God work the cross, the way of the cross, into our soul in 2021 so that we would be weaned and crucified of self-love, that the love for Jesus would be greater than any self-love we would have. May he rise up within the remnant of his people in 2021 that we would burn with that passion for him as we enter this new year. I go on here and uh, the notes, Christ-like humility. May, may he form within us Christ-like humility, meekness, self-sacrifice, obedience, and love. The meekness of the lamb. Oh my gosh, do we need meekness. <laughs> do we need that pride? Oh gosh, has 2020 surfaced the pride in all of our hearts? You look at the church, you look online, you look at these banterings back and forth that are going on in social media about this thing or that thing, and you realize, where is the meekness of the lamb in his church? <laughs> I tell you what, it's not there. It's not in me like it needs to be. It needs to be greater. Lord, may you, in 2021, work the meekness of the lamb inside of us that we would be slow to speak, quick to hear. Slow to type if we're on social media. Responding to people. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, sometimes I read stuff and I'm just, my blood boils and I'm like, what? Anyway, won't go there. May we have the meekness of Jesus Christ in 2021 and developed within us in a much greater way. Jesus said, learn of me, for I am, low, I am meek and I am low of heart. May the humility of the lamb and the meekness of Jesus Christ be formed in our heart and our soul in a much greater way in 2021. Absolute obedience to the Holy Spirit. I saw something this morning that Evan, Evan Roberts, who led the Welsh Revival, he would always end the revival meetings by saying to everyone there, obey the Holy Spirit. He was so sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He was so sensitive in his spirit to the Holy Spirit. He obeyed the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Absolute obedience to the Holy Spirit. Revelation 14, they follow the lamb wherever he goes. Lips that only speak the truth. God, help us. Purify our lips from gossip, slander, accusation, that we would speak the truth in love and speak the truth in grace. Holiness and blamelessness. May we, in a greater measure, as we enter into 2021, may we be more and more like the bride that is holy and blameless without spot, stain, or wrinkle. But I believe this is what God wants to do, is he wants to, in a greater way, bring us into the formation of Jesus Christ internally so that we could reflect in conformity the image of the man, Jesus Christ. What, a, what an incredible destiny you have. Listen, you may think your destiny is to go out and do great things for God. I'm telling you, the greater, much greater destiny is for you to become like the man, Jesus Christ. That's far greater than anything you will ever do for him. Now, I'm not saying what we do for him is not important. It is important. But far greater than what you do for God is who you become to God is that we would be conformed into his image. For all eternity, he could look into us and say, that, my corporate son, is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. 
God is moving. I'm telling you, God's ultimate intention is to bring forth uh, this man-child, this the mature child. Paul talked about it in Ephesians 4.13, that he would bring the church uh, into, this, uh, in, into this formation of the man, Jesus Christ. And see, God is on the move. God is working to bring a corporate remnant into this move of God. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, and again, we are going to have a lot of teaching on Revelation 12 in 2021. It's very important that we understand what the Lord's saying in that. The second thing I want to say that I believe the Lord wants to, I'm not going to say, I'm not prophesying this is a prophecy. This is more of the beginning of what God wants to emphasize and do in 2021 is there is a bridal revival that's coming. I think Mike Bickle used that word, so I want to quote him accurately. I believe he's the first one to use that word. I, I love that phrase, a bridal revival. A bridal revival is coming. Last week, I, I had a dream, and I was in the dream with a famous revivalist preacher, and we were in a hoverboat kind of swamp. You know, you can uh, glide over swamps, the hoverboat kind of thing. I won't go into all the details of the dream, but he turned to me, and he said, get ready for a move of the Holy Spirit. Get ready for a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. I, I want to tell you, I want to prophesy this to you. A mighty move of the Holy Spirit is coming. There is coming a great awakening like something we have never seen that will far surpass the first great awakening, that will far surpass the second great awakening. It is a third great awakening, not just limited to America, but across the, the nations of the earth, it is the ultimate fulfillment of Joel chapter 2, verse 28. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will have visions, your old men will have dreams. I'm telling you, there is coming a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Things around us might be shaking. Things around us might be in uh, turbulence. But a, a, an incredible, mighty move of the Spirit of Jesus Christ is coming and is coming to this nation. But let me say this. God's ultimate intention in this coming great awakening, it is not, only, is not just, it, well, let me say it this way. It's far greater than just releasing signs and wonders and miracles though that will happen. It's far greater than bring, bringing salvation, though that will happen. It's far greater than making kingdom advancements, though that will happen. It's far greater than what we normally think of as the harvest. God is pouring out his spirit to make his bride ready at the end of the age. And you can look at past revivals and see most of them failed to make the bride of Christ ready. Maybe a remnant, but not many. This outpouring of the Spirit, is, I believe, is intended in the heart of God to make the bride of Christ ready. It's not just to take dominion in the seven mountains of culture. It's not just to advance the kingdom of God. It's to make the bride ready internally to be with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. That's where all of history is headed. That is God's ultimate intention. That is why God created you, saved you, is to make you his very own bride, conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's your destiny more than anything else. So I believe this coming great awakening, it's exciting, but there's also a warning attached to it. We have to be very discerning in this because I believe this great awakening is going to split the church. There's going to be a number of people, I would say, I don't, I don't know the number, but I'm going to say many in the church who are not going to discern God's ultimate intention in this coming great awakening. And they're going to think he's coming to make the culture better. He's coming to transform culture. He's coming to transform nations. He's coming to make our nation great again or whatever it would be. 
He's coming to make advance the kingdom. Now, all, now, there's some truth in that, but the ultimate intention that God has in this great awakening is to make his beloved bride ready. And there's going to be a remnant in the church that are going to discern that. And they're going to awaken to Christ as their very satisfaction in their very life. But many are going to be seduced by signs and wonders, even ones God gives. As you realize, you can lose your first love by being addicted to signs and wonders, even though God does. And you can be addicted to the gifts of the Spirit and prophesying. and all. God does all of that. I'm not against any of that. But God's ultimate intention is to make his bride ready. That's what's in the heart of God. That is why he's pouring out a spirit. So we've just got to discern this. I believe it's going to divide the church. It's going to divide the church. We want to make sure we keep at the forefront of our minds God's primary purpose in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I'll be shocked if I hear a lot of people say it. Honestly, I will. God's primary purpose in this is to conform his people internally into the nature of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. It is not to take over and invade culture with the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not saying that won't happen. It might. But that's not God's ultimate intention in this coming great awakening. See, the bride of Christ, and I'm going to go into this in a teaching uh, next week. I'm going to do it just online. I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it just it will post on our YouTube about the seven mountain teaching that has been spreading across. You want to definitely make sure you listen to that. Is the bride of Christ is not called to take dominion over the nation so Jesus can return. Rather, the bride is to make herself ready for the bridegroom so Jesus can return. It is the bride's readiness that determines his return, not the transformation of nations. Peter said is that we can actually hasten the second coming of Jesus Christ. Think about that. That's crazy. Think about that. A lot of people think, well, it's just this uh, calendar fix and the sovereignty of God of exactly when it will happen. But Peter tells us that's not totally true. You can actually hasten the second coming of Jesus Christ by, and he, Peter doesn't use these words, but if you follow it in Scripture, by your readiness. It is the readiness of the bride of Jesus Christ that determines his return. That's how we hasten his return. See, the Lord's intention in this great awakening, this bridal revival that's coming, is to awaken the five foolish virgins, that they would be, or the, the five of the five of the ten virgins, that they would gather oil, that they would purchase oil and be made ready for the bridegroom. Our destiny is determined by our response. Our destiny, and I'm talking about eternal destiny, it is determined by the way we respond to him. God help us as we enter 2021. And that brings me to the third point. Given that, 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 that God's emphasis is on Revelation chapter 12, given that a bridal revival is coming, the third thing I would say, it is time for the church to get ready. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the church to shake off our complacency, our apathy, our indifference. Wake up. Your salvation is closer than when you, were, when you first believed. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That is the hour we live in. It's time to get ready for the Lord. Now, I'm going to read through a couple scriptures here. And, you know, we're, we've been, we'll, we'll get into it in 2021. I keep saying that. But in 2021, man, we're going to have a lot to talk about. But we're going to be looking, we're looking at the end times. And if you, if you study the, the passages on the end times, is Jesus used frequently phrases like, be ready, be on the alert, be dressed in readiness, to exhort us to be prepared for him and the last days. See, far greater than I'm trying to interpret in the book of Revelation is this third trumpet jump, uh, 
third trumpet judgment, an asteroid, or what, you know, what is it, or when is the timing of the rapture, far more important is that we are ready. And I, I say this a lot, is it's far more important to be ready than to be right. See, every, a lot of people have their end time doctrine squared away. I mean, it is like so precise. I mean, it is as if God himself spoke, but they're not ready internally. It is much more important to be ready internally than to be right about your doctrine. Now, we need right doctrine. Don't get me wrong. We need right doctrine. But even greater is we need internal readiness. There's a lot of people who have it mapped out exactly with their charts and their timings of how these things are going to happen. And the Lord looks, I don't know if the Lord looks at them, but I imagine he looks at them and says, yes, but you need to be ready internally. Let's look at a couple scriptures here. Turn to, Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. We're going to just look at some scriptures just to show you the emphasis Jesus has on being made ready. Talking about the end of the age. Therefore, be on the alert. So notice that. Be on the alert. In other words, don't be sleepy. Don't be complacent. Don't be apathetic. Don't be sound asleep. Be on the alert. You do not know the day or the, the hour your Lord is coming. Or actually, you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have, he would have been on the alert and would have not allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready. Listen, listen, let me... Just listen to the words of Jesus Christ speaking directly to you, directly to me right now. Let me say that again. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not think he will. Those are the words of the one who created in Genesis chapter 1. He's telling us with certainty to the majority of the world or mo all of the world, the majority of his people, the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not think he will come. There will be a remnant, that, though, that will be ready. May God give us the grace to be part of that remnant who would be made ready. I'll read one more passage. Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. And it's a, it's a parable of the ten virgins. It's, I, I, like, I like how Dad says it. It's the parable of the, of the ten Christians. These are ten saved believers. Five wait for the Lord's return with wisdom, and five wait with foolishness. And listen, listen to what the Lord says. He says, while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him. Notice again, those who were ready. Salvation alone does not make you ready for the Lord. That doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. You are, if you're saved. But salvation alone does not make you ready for the Lord. It's that inner work of sanctification. It is that inner work of the indwelling Holy Spirit that makes you ready. Salvation in your spirit alone does not make you ready for him. Being born again alone does not make you ready for him. Now, that's vital, obviously. You can't enter the kingdom of God without being born again. But it is the work of the indwelling Holy Spirit who makes you ready internally that makes you ready for the Lord. And I would encourage everyone to reread the parable of the ten virgins. Those who were ready went into the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later the other virgins came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you intimately. I do not know you in the secret place. I do not know you in the prayer closet. I do not know you in the word. I do not know you in fellowship with the Spirit. May God not say that to any of us. May we be found in the secret place in 2021 knowing the Lord. 
knowing him intimately, fellowshipping with the Spirit, going deep in the Word of God. May we know him intimately. And Jesus says, be on the alert then. One translation says, watch therefore. For you do not know the day or the hour when the bridegroom, I just added this part, when the bridegroom comes. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet him. May we be like the five wise virgins that, uh, that trimmed their lamps and oil was there and the light began to shine in an instant. May we be like that in 2021. Amen? So every year, and I said this at, at the beginning, but every year we make New Year's resolutions. We want to eat healthier. We want to lose weight. We want to exercise more, read the Bible more, save more money. You know, but most of us by, you know, they say that when you go to a gym on, in January, it's packed full. In February, it gets even uh, lower attendance. March, it's the same crew that was there in 2020. You know, a lot of us, we don't follow through with our New Year's resolutions. But I, I still think New Year's resolutions are good. But, you know, most of us never, ever follow through with that. But what about this? What about in 2021, as we head into 2021, what if we made a resolution even greater than exercising more or eating better or reading more or whatever? What if we made a resolution to say we want to be internally ready for him. What if that was our number one resolution in 2021? Is that we would be internally ready for him. And I mentioned Jonathan Edwards. And he said when he was writing, his, he wrote 70 resolutions. I mean, if I had 70 resolutions, oh my gosh, I struggle with like one or two. But here's what he said at the beginning of his 70 resolutions. And again, if you're, if you're, feeling pretty proud about your relationship with Christ, go read those because it will definitely humble you. Jonathan Edwards said, being sensible that I am unable to do anything without God's help, I do humbly entreat him by his grace to enable me to keep these resolutions so far as they are agreeable to his will for Christ Jesus' sake. That's powerful. Our resolutions to follow him and our resolutions to obey him and our resolutions to make ourselves ready, even though we have a responsibility, will fall flat on their face if God's grace does not come along and empower our devotion. I mean, all of us know that. All of us know we have tried on our own gritted teeth and de dedication to say, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna commit ourselves to do this, and the next you know, 10 minutes later we're playing video games or whatever. So... We all have done our, our, our number of failed devotions or resolutions. And so I'm not talking about, I am not talking about mustering up soul power to try to live for God. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about setting ourselves apart so that his life can fill us. So that his life, his grace can empower us. So that internally we could be made ready. And so... If you have your notes, uh, page 4.J is it takes about 21 days to form a new habit. What if, as we enter 2021, that together we embraced a 21-day challenge for internal readiness? How's that? Let me say it again. It takes 21 days to form a habit. What if, as we enter 2021, together we embraced a 21-day challenge for internal readiness? What if, for 21 days, we took, uh, I'm going to go through a list in a minute of what internal readiness looks like, and we turned those into prayers, and we prayed for 21 minutes a day, for 21 days, for God by the Spirit to develop these traits within us. I started that this morning. And it's one advantage of being the preacher, you can get a jump start on what you're going to preach about. But spend 21 minutes for 21 days crying out to God, asking him for the grace that he would provide to make ourselves ready. And so I'm going to read it like this, this list like this, using the words of Jonathan Edwards, resolved. Now, when I say this, let me just give some clarification. When I say resolved, 
I am not talking about, I, I'm talking about us doing our part. All right? I'm not, God, it's up to God if he does his part. He will do his part, but it, we, us, we, we do our part, God will do his part. Resolved, number one, resolved to have first love for Jesus. A love so deep that we love him even more than we love ourselves. Now, I'm just going to pray this for us. Lord, would you, in 2021, give all who are listening a love so deep for Jesus Christ that he is our first love, greater than we love anyone else, greater than we love ourselves and our families, greater than we love our nation, greater than we love anything or anyone else, would you give us a first love for Jesus Christ? So, I mean, that's just an example of how you can pray, just like, just like that. Number two, we'll, we'll post these notes on our YouTube channel, videos.restorationlife.org, and you can, you can get the notes there, um, or radicalpursuit.net, either one, radicalpursuit.net or videos.restorationlife.org. The second one, resolved to be faithful to the Lamb in such a way that we are transformed into living martyrs who are willing to die for our faith. Again, I'm not saying like you're going to be a martyr. I'm saying that internal fortitude, that internal faithfulness, that you would be a living martyr for sure, but you would say, I will follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Number three, resolved to love the truth. Oh, man, how do we need, how much do we need that today? Oh, you know what? I forgot to pray number two. Let me pray number two. Lord, would you make us faithful to the Lamb, and would you transform us internally so that we are living martyrs that would, that would be willing to die for our faith? Didn't hear a lot of amens, but I trust that uh, you still agree. Number three, resolve to love the truth in such a way that it consumes all of our hearts. Man, is this needed in the church today. Man, is this needed in the world today. There are so many lies, propagandas, conspiracy theories out there it's getting so hard to know what is the real truth out there. May God give us a love for the truth that it would burn in our hearts, that we could discern the faults that comes from the media, that we could discern the faults that comes through false conspiracy theories, that we could discern the, the truth from even what comes from ministers in sheep clothing who come in the name of Jesus and will deceive many. May we discern the truth in 2021, Lord, may our hearts be consumed that we would be in full agreement with the word, removing all forms of compromise. Amen. Number four, I know someone's asking how many are there. Well, there's like 13, but I'll go faster. Resolved to be intolerant of the ways and works of Jezebel in our sphere of authority. Resolved to be intolerant of Jezebel, wherever God has given us authority. And, you know, you can read about Jezebel in 1 Kings 17, 18, and just see her seduction, her witchcraft, all that she is. I mean, we are living, without a doubt, in the days of Elijah, and it's going to be more so as we head to the second coming of Jesus Christ, where if there is an Elijah, there is also a Jezebel. If, there's a, if we're living indeed in the days of Elijah, and we are, then we're going to see false religion. We're going to see deception. We're going to see witchcraft. All of it increase. May God give us an extreme hatred of Jezebel. May we be like Jesus, who, love, who loves righteousness and hates lawlessness. God, would you give us a hatred of lawlessness? The church right now does not hate lawlessness like Jesus hates lawlessness. Just agree with me right now. We don't hate 
lawlessness like he does. Lord, would you increase within our hearts in 2021 not just a love for righteousness, but a hatred of that which offends you, hatred of lawlessness, Lord. May we hate what Jezebel is and all she represents. May we hate her lawless deeds and not tolerate them for a moment. Amen. Number five. And then when you're praying through these for 21 days, wrestle this out with the Lord. Wrestle it out with him. He'll, I, let, we, we need to get back to repentance. Amen. We've lost repentance in the church. Through this hyper grace teaching that says, you know, it doesn't really matter how we live. Jesus loves us and he's good anyway. That's a bunch of baloney. That is not the scriptures. This false hyper grace thing, we need to come back to repentance. You know, the, the condition of our nation has, and, and in fact, one of, I forget the exact person who said this. He came in the 1800s, I believe, and he was wanting to find out what is the secret that makes America so great. And he looked all around and he said, the one thing that, and I'm misquoting it because I didn't plan to say this, but the one thing that makes America so great is her, her pulpits are filled with righteous preachers. That's what makes America great. America is great because she is good. How, in the name of seeker sensitive Christianity, we have lost that preaching of righteousness and how we need that back to get back to repentance. Amen. Number five, a deep, driving hunger for God that overpowers apathy, complacency, indifference, carelessness. May God give to me, to us, a hunger for him and his word like our African brethren have. I've told this story many times, but I'll tell it one more time. It's a great story. But I think it was a few years ago, we had a leadership meeting in Nakuru. We gathered our leadership team for like a two-week time of meeting. And one of our leaders who lives in the Congo had a broken leg, and he resolved that he was not going to miss this meeting. And so if you don't know, to get to the Congo, to Nakuru, Kenya, on a bus takes one week of travel with a broken leg, with a broken leg. He was resolved to say, I, I am so hungry for God, I am not going to miss this meeting. That's amazing. I mean, you, you basically, you, you travel seven days, each night you sleep in a hotel, but with a broken leg. It took him a week, or maybe two, I, I think a week, a week. And then he had to go back after two weeks, back to the Congo. That's hunger for God. That's hunger for God. May God give us hunger for him in 2021 that drives us to him. Let's pray that real quick. We all need this. Lord, would you give us in 2021 a deep and driving hunger for you that would overpower apathy, complacency, indifference, and carelessness Lord, give us a hunger for you like we have never had in Jesus' name. Number six, a disciplined lifestyle that helps us maintain our victory until the end. A charismatic church does not like the D word, discipline. Now, again, we can easily get into legalism, but being disciplined is not legalism. Being disciplined is doing what we need to position ourselves before the Lord so that his spirit can form Jesus within us. Lord, I pray that you would give us in 2021 a discipline of Jesus Christ, that we might have his discipline within us. Number seven, a fi resolved to have a fiery passion for Jesus that consumes self-satisfaction. Resolve to have a fiery passion for Jesus 
that consumes self-satisfaction. May we not be satisfied in ourselves. May our pride and our self-life not satisfy us so we're too full for God. May the Holy Spirit come with fresh baptism of the fiery Spirit of God that we might be baptized not only with the Holy Spirit but also with fire as we head into 2021 in such a way that self-satisfaction and pride and all that's involved in being lukewarm burns away and that which remains is a fiery passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, do it. We ask you, Lord, do that in our hearts, Lord. Set our hearts ablaze with holy passion for you, we pray. Number eight, a cruci- resolved to live a crucified self-life with, heart, with my heart and my soul fully possessed by the Spirit of God. I love that. God, do that. That you might work the cross, the way of the cross, into us internally, that it would crucify our self life, that we might be filled with the very life of the Son of God in our heart and in our soul. Number eight, number nine. Only got five more. (laughs) But what a better way to enter to 2021, right? What, are you going to go home and watch TV? This is better than TV. Come on. Anyway, number nine, resolved to have Christ-like humility, meekness, self-sacrifice, obedience, and love that overcomes the nature of the proud, independent, rebellious, self-serving, accusatory nature of the dragon, of Satan, the accuser. Man, that's deep. We need that. Do a deep work in us, Lord. Just agree with me. Do a deep work, Lord, within our hearts, within our souls, within our minds, within our lips, with our thoughts, how we think, how we feel, what we choose, to have the humility of Jesus Christ and the meekness of Jesus Christ formed in us. Lord, that we would be willing to be self-sacrificial, obedient, and loving, that would overcome the nature of our flesh, that would overcome the nature of the accuser of the brethren. Number 10, Resolved to have sexual purity in our hearts, souls, and bodies. Resolved in 2021 to have sexual purity in our hearts, souls, and bodies. Lord, would you do that work within us? Lord, in our heart, in our soul, but also in our body, with our eyes, with our hands, what we look at, what we think about to have purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Lord, may you work a deep work of the Spirit of Jesus in us for sexual purity, that we would, not look on, we would not look on anything with eyes of lust, but we would have eyes of purity. Number 11, resolve to be absolutely obedient to the Holy Spirit in such a way that we would follow the Lamb wherever He goes. God, would you do that in us? Would you do that in us, Lord? Lord, we want as we enter this new year to follow you wherever you go, to speak only when you say to speak, to refrain when and when you say refrain, to be sensitive to the, the most gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit. Would you make us very sensitive to the inward promptings of the Spirit, the inward nudges of the Spirit? May you increase our spiritual intuition that knowing in our spirit of what you want us to do 
and what you want us to say. May doubt and unbelief come down, and may the faith of the Son of God rise up within us. Number 12, two more. Lips that only speak the truth, whose yes is yes, whose no is no. We all need that, don't we? Man, gosh. Lord, that, like Isaiah, the coal of fire touching his lips, purifying his speech, purifying his lips so that he could proclaim the beauty of the Lord. May that be true of us in 2021. Agree with me in prayer. Is that we would be resolved to to have lips that only speak the truth, whose yes is yes, whose no is no. Lord, would you, Lord, this is where James comes in and talks about the tongue is is a deadly weapon. It is set on fire by hell itself. May you, Lord, get a hold of our lips in 2021 and purify our speech from accusation, gossip, slander, criticism, judgment. Lord, all that would be related to the mouth. Lord, forgive me. Forgive us. Lord, forgive me. I'll just say, forgive me for speaking forth accusations unfounded in truth. Forgive me for speaking judgments and criticisms over my brethren, Lord. Forgive us for gossiping. Lord, may you purify our lips in 2021. He's starting now in Jesus' name. Yeah, a little convicting. So that's good. That's good. Lord, would you, or number 13, resolved to be holy and blameless before him, not just positionally, but experientially. Not just justified, but sanctified. Not just declared righteous, but actually a living embodiment of righteousness. Amen. That he would have a bride that is without spot, stain, or blemish at his coming. We sang about it earlier, the blessed hope. He is the blessed hope. He is the blessed hope. Christ is the blessed hope. The bridegroom, he's coming. And he's coming for a bride without spot, stain, or blemish. Lord, we pray that resolved to be holy, not by a man's working of external legalistic righteousness, but the inward power of your grace that you would work within us by the grace of God, inward righteousness, that we would be holy internally and and externally, not by a legalistic form of righteousness, but by the life of Jesus Christ who dwells within us internally. Make us ready, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I I just, as we were talking, I realized... When we were talking about speaking the truth, I actually told a lie. I said I would be done in 40 minutes, and I didn't time myself, sorry. But it's been a lot longer than 40 minutes. The grace of God coming on me, I really felt, uh, I didn't know if I could even talk, I was so tired. But the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon us, amen, amen. So anyway, I just want to, as we wrap this message up, I want to encourage all of us to do the 21-day challenge. 21 days to develop a new habit. 21 days, 21 minutes a day, and you can get the notes on our YouTube channel uh, or on our Radical Pursuit, whatever, to take these 13 things of characteristics of internal readiness and to, and to go into the secret place with the, with the Lord. And, and really, even at, look, sometimes we think, oh, well, I don't want to be legalistic. Sometimes, I'm telling you, discipline is good. Disciplining ourselves is a good thing. Now, we don't want to just live by discipline, but when I find when I discipline myself, the Holy Spirit then comes, and I position myself, the Holy Spirit then comes and empowers what I, what I resolve to do. So for 21 days, for 21 minutes a day, resolved to cry out to God for Him to develop within us internal readiness. Amen. Let's do it. 
21 days, 21 minutes a day, even the young kids, even the young kids, even like Anna and Ellie and sweet Kate and even the young kids, you can do this. 20, 21 days, 21 minutes a day spending in prayer to, set, to prepare our hearts for internal readiness for 2021. Amen. God bless you.